This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, uh, live on IndieWrestling.us. And wherever you find your uh, Indie Mayhem podcasting situation, uh, this is the show where we talk to people in and around independent professional wrestling, and we have a lot of fun with it. Uh, and we got a great guest today. Um, and uh, and uh, you can, of course, subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. Um, and, of course, the video versions on the Wrestling Mayhem Show YouTube and Facebook page. And also keep an eye for this live streams of our interviews over on IndieWrestling.us's Facebook page um, and of course listed on IndieWrestling.us and WrestlingMayhemShow.com if you have anybody you want us to chat with hit us up at Mayhem Show on the Twitter on the Facebook pages for either of those and um, uh, of course uh, uh, good times at SorgatronMedia.com if you want to hit us up about anything like that and keep an eye on Facebook events for uh, when we do pop up with some interviews as well so today's guest is somebody that uh, i've uh, had the pleasure of seeing both in uh, pwx and uh, rise about a year ago i think i first yes. saw you in a match in january of last year i think at pwx yeah. christian black is uh joining us here i'm sorry christian noir is yeah. joining us here a little bit of a <laughs> little bit of a change and i'm, I'm yeah. still i'm still i'm still learning it <laughs> yeah, I'm, <laughs> so, I'm still getting there too with me. What's, that's, that's a good thing we'll, maybe we'll get into here in a little bit but first we a little bit of a and by the way if you're on audio this is a visual treat this this week uh, because uh, he's full face paint. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love it. I would I love the, the looks that you got walking up the street in Beachview here after you parked. <laughs> oh yeah, getting out. I like just peeped across the street and like everyone's like breaking their necks. Yeah, looking yeah. at me and like the only thing I can do is like squint back because the paint's right above my brow, so it kind of like folds too. As soon as I squint with an angry face, it's everyone like, just turns around. The entire taco stand across the street went, <laughs> I'm actually about to go over there last, after this. And the, get you, know, you know, it's a very it's a very Latino neighborhood. They're, they got a lot of cool Day, day of the Dead stuff down the street in one of the restaurants. Maybe they're just like, they just seemed like one of their things. <laughs> is, is it around that time? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I think day, day of the Dead is like, I think right after Halloween. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm only a quarter Cuban, so like someone Hispanic goes with me, but I'm like, I don't stand out that enough in the Hispanic community <laughs> to just blend on in with it. <laughs> Anyways, a little bit of icebreaker. Uh, so what is your earliest memory of uh, pro wrestling? My earliest memory, it had to be two things. I remember, I think I was watching Monday Night Raw as a child, and I saw a man in a button-up shirt and these brown tights just get thrown off this cell. Now that I know it's McFoley and Undertaker. That was the earliest memory I've ever had. And like ever since then, I was like, "Mom, Mom, I want to do that." And she was like, "You're going to die if you do that." And I was like, "Oh, <clears throat> the other earliest memory I could ever think of a, you know, like DX was like big when yeah, I was a kid. Yeah. So Eric, all kids around doing the whole suck it thing, and I'm running around my house, you know, I'm just doing it all the time. I was like, "Mom, look, I'm DX, suck it, man." I like blinked. I was on the floor. My mom hit me so hard. She's like, "Do you even know what that means?" Not at all. <laughs> so so you were you wanted to get in or at on top of the i say in the ring usually but on top of the cage first off yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but by way of the ring um but uh so so it was always like a thing that you wanted to get in there always ever since like my earliest memories even like when i started to transition out of the military that's mm -hmm. what i wanted to do as well Awesome. So, so how did that transition happen? Um, you know, how did you kind of discover like uh, your your wrestling schools and things like that? <clears throat> um, I was just like trying to transition off the military, mm -hmm. and I was like, at first I was like at, at a loss because mm -hmm. I was still young. No one uh, wanted. What, what branch? I was a uh, United States Air Force. Okay, cool. <laughs> Good times in there. <laughs> <laughs> but I was transitioning back into civilian life. But you mm -hmm. know, some people take the transition well, some don't. And I was young getting out. Because I did three years, and I had to get out with a medical discharge. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I felt at a loss of what to do. Like, I was so young, but I had this job that, you know, they trained me in, like, two months to do. 
Mm-hmm. No one's like, oh, we'll just take this young kid, give him this big college like degree job. So like I was like doing odd jobs here and there, and during like a stint of depression, really, I was like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what I want to do in life anymore. I don't. I was confused until one day I was like just sitting down, just watching the TV, and I was just scanning through channels, and I saw Raw, and I was like, wait a minute, I used to love this when I was a kid. And I was like, all right, I'll, I'll keep watching. Then the next week, then the next week kept going on. And I looked at him and I was like, wait a minute. I'm old enough for this. I can do this. I was like, it can't be that hard to figure it out. So then I started comparing schools in the area with my price range and all that. And eventually I started at a PWX having Brandon K and Dean as my head trainer. And Dean Radford, right? Yeah. That man, <laughs> scaring. <laughs> training, training with them two was, it was an experience. I'll give it that. Mm-hmm. And we, yeah, we just had him on a, a couple of weeks ago, actually here on this show. So, um, good to have that connection too. Yeah. Um, so uh, getting into that, uh, tell me a little bit about you know Christian Black now Christian Noir. <laughs> like, how how did this face come about? <laughs> <I guess. laughs> the way it all started. Um, Initially, I was like when I started when I debuted in like late 2014. My first match had to be in December. Mm-hmm. I was just given the idea of Travis Brooks, the whole fitness guru. I okay. was I was running around Clinton Crooks, jumping jacks, and all that kit and caboodle. Everybody remembers it. And I was just kind of like for a whole year, hence eating shit for an entire year. Mm-hmm. And then like soon as you no know, 2015 ended, I was. Just I was just tired. I was like, this isn't what I wanted to do. This is this isn't who I am. Mm-hmm. Then I started to experiment because I was like, I like face pain. So I started coming out with face pain after a while because like then I transitioned to the whole Janice character, which lasted a good like, two months. Mm-hmm. Janice. So <laughs> I mean, we got we got to hear the transition here. <laughs> So it was one show. It was a pre-show for Bird Brawl. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm getting ready for a match. Beastman and Shirley Doe show up out of nowhere, absolutely murder me, drag me to the back. I come back an hour later, half black, half white tights, half my face painted, and with no explanation, I was this character that has split personality. It was, like, so quick, I don't think fans even registered what happened. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't even fully get into it because I still didn't understand. Yeah. That only worked for, like, two months, and I was like, I got to take a break. I got to really assess who I am. <clears throat> and then, you know, I was, I was away from all that. Then I came back, like, three months later as Christian Black <clears throat> because I got the name Christian because I grew up in a Christian household. You know, my, especially my grandmother, very religious almost like a nun religious. And I got always developed the name black from, <clears throat> I was always viewed as the black sheep, always, I questioned religion. I wanted to know why things happened. Why did he flood the world? Why did this happen? Why? My grandma would always just hit me, beat me when I wrote ask these questions. And she always just told me, you need to have faith. I was like, I need it. Like, I can't fall if I don't know what's going on. And she always treated me like the black sheep. She even called me that directly to my face. It's like, you're like the black sheep of this, of like religion. She's like, you just want to sit here and ask questions. And that's where I got Christian Black from. I am the black sheep of the religion I grew up with. Interesting. Um, and, and, and I've seen it develop a little bit. Like you, you're, you're, you kind of uh, um, have been building your entrance a bit. Oh, yeah. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of atmosphere to it. Um, I'm, all, I'm also a fan of Rob Zombie when he came out for that for a little bit. Uh, so <laughs> I'm just like, oh, okay, now we're talking. Um, because I think I had not seen you for a little bit until uh, I started coming to Rise or Stomp Out Cancer or something like that. And yeah. uh, it started getting my, my attention uh, for what you were doing for sure. Yeah, I'm, I was, I'm always very into theatrics. In high mm. school, I was in theater, and I always appreciated the theater. And I always learned that the theater is supposed to grab your attention. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to, you don't want to be you no know, Joe Schmo next to you. You don't want to look the same, be the same. That's why I'll, even with my face paint, I always try to change it up. But still always keep it somewhat the same. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. From that to my entrances, sort of like, so I was wondering, oh, what's he gonna do now? Like, out. Sometimes I had a scarecrow theme. I did one where I wrestled Phoenix. Love that dude. Where I literally came out blindfolded with a candle in my hand, just to light my entire way. There's one time I came out. I was wrestling Tony Johnson. He was going like the Golden Bear. I came out with a Native American headdress. Had Native American theme going on. Came out. We won a tomahawk. <clears throat> so I kind of always try to change it up. Like, hence, whoever my opponent is mm-hmm. to help hence it, and say play play my games against them. Like, oh, I know what you are. I can I can poke it at what you are. Mm-hmm. Kind of sense of like that. That's awesome. So, um, from that, so so how has uh, of course you're involved in Rise uh, now, and there's a lot of uh, activity going on around that, um, and, and you're training down there, of course. Uh, tell me a little bit about that vibe down down there in that company right now. <laughs> when I went to Rise, like when it started up. Like, I think we all have the same emotion. Like, man, this is something fresh, something new. Like, we got to, we're going to put our heart and soul into all of this. Mm-hmm. And coming in there, it was just something different altogether. Like, you felt, it didn't feel like, like wrestling around, like, the in, like any other place in the local area. It, whether it was from wrestling in a theater kind of set, kind of setting where, and it kind of has the fans, oh, my bad, where you just have the fans, like, just focus in on you from where they're sitting. <clears throat> the vibe was very more open and very like we can express ourselves in the ring and express ourselves how we're we're not we weren't restricted in a mm-hmm. sense we weren't limited of oh you can just do this this and this or you can't do this and that like I was told forever for a good while because I'm 200 pounds like five eight it was like people were saying, like I don't see you doing springboards I don't see you doing six one nine like you're you're too heavy for a small guy Rise gave me the platform like to show. Oh, I can do a springboard. Oh, I can do a six. I'm amazed that's still a conversation in a day where like Kevin Owens is on a main stage. <clears throat> like he's a guy that does not look like he should be doing top root moves, right? Oh, very. He doesn't look like it. But I think we transitioned from like, I mean, I'm still young in this. So yeah. my opinion is, you know, I guess to some guys, yeah. But I feel like we're in an age of, we're not restricted by our size. No. Like you have guys who are like, like Gannon. Gannon could do a backflip off the top rope. <laughs> yeah. I, like, I used to see that. When I first saw it, I was like, you got to be kidding me. And, of course, we're talking Gannon Jones Jr., who's probably a good 6'7"? Six, 6'7", seven? Six, seven, six, 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 yeah. six, And he's like 250. Yeah. Gannon does, could do a backflip off the top rope. And, like, I don't think we're in a – like, we're, we're past that point where, like, your size does not dictate what you can and cannot do. If you mm-hmm. can do it, go out there and show that you can. There's a lot of um, – over six and a half feet guys doing moon salts these days. Yeah. It's, in, it's incredible. A lot of them in this area, actually. Yeah. You even have small guys who are yeah. like, I guarantee the back there were like, small guys, you should not be picking people up. And like, you're not body slamming anybody. But you have legit guys who are like, you know, small, like under like, like me under like six foot. Yeah. <clears throat> who go to the gym who are like legitly strong. And now we're in a day of age where like we can showcase like, just because I'm 5'10". I could pick up this guy who's 300 pounds. We did just see Ronda Rousey legit pick up Triple H a couple yeah. days ago. So <laughs> that blew like, my mind. I was yeah. like, I was, I was in my house like, you gotta be kidding me. This I, I, like, and it's like, he's not helping her a lot, is he? <laughs> I feel like he's sandbagged. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, right? <laughs> um, but no, no, like, so yeah, so so those expectations are definitely changing a bit. Oh yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about, um, you know, obviously, you know, ever evolving. Like, what kind of, you know, do you have any kind of roadmap to where this character goes right now? <clears throat> Honestly, I don't like when I did this character. This is this is like my third character. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. So, and this is the one that fits in with you more internally. Most, it seems. Yeah, the other two did not fit me. This one, I, I looked inside like the anti-religion, mm-hmm. the oppression of who I was, and I felt when I started doing this, I was like, "This is my last shot," because mm-hmm. third times the charm or don't work at all. Right. So it was either I also my thing was I got to make this work. So I started like digging into actually things I knew, comic. No, I dug into comics. I love my comics. I loved Batman. I lo- my favorite villain had to be Scarecrow. Hence where I got the whole idea of fear from, because fear cripples anybody, big, small, tall, whatever. Fear can bring you down to like below my level. So with this, I just started going off, and I was like, I, there's no limit for this character, because I feel like I can always adapt and change over time. Because I think that's what you have to do with any character. Like, you can't just be the same person you were 
for 20 years. You've got to adapt as the times go. As you age, you got to age your character as itself in that sense. Awesome. Um, so what's the best and worst thing about indie wrestling so far for you? You're, you're a few years into this thing. You've had a few goes. And uh... <laughs> the best thing I would say is like <clears throat> the people you meet along the way. That's at least from my point of view. I, I'm a very friendly person. I love meeting people. I love shaking hands. I love going to different places. Like, because you never know someone's different life story or like who you might click with mm -hmm. or where you might go. I love the people. I love the traveling part of indie wrestling. The thing I could say I probably don't like at indie wrestling <laughs> is probably at the same time the people. Because <clears throat> you don't, like I said, you run into people who are so serious, so full of themselves. Like, I understand, like, you got to have a little bit of an ego to yourself. Mm -hmm. you, gotta, you can't be afraid to stand up for yourself. <clears throat> but there are guys who just toot their nose up and just like, I'm not doing anything. Or you're going to do this. Or like, I'm going to tell you what you're going to do. And it's like, or you got to like, you know, you got to shake someone and say, hey, man, how you doing? I'm such and such. You might have some people who just look at your hand, just like walk away or give you like a lazy hand shake. And it's like, did I do something wrong? Was I wrong somewhere? So at the same time, like, it's the people. <laughs> they make indie wrestling. Because you, like, you're going to meet people along the way. Mm -hmm. They can make, it makes times good, it makes times bad. Because I guarantee any story it involves with this one person I was with. All right. It's like, yeah. Um... Anybody you're watching these days? Anybody that kind of got your attention uh, for inspiration or anything like that? <laughs> One of my biggest inspirations has to be uh, Pentagon. <laughs> yeah, Pentagon. Somebody's giving the answer off camera for you because <laughs> apparently this happens all the time, right? Wait, who? Wait, who said it? I, I, no, no, I'm just saying that somebody off camera. Oh. It was kind of mouthing the oh, same that, answer. <laughs> oh, that character. Yeah, Pentagon Junior. Pentagon. Mm -hmm. Um, he's like literally my biggest inspiration because he showed because <clears throat> watching him, I know he's not like that big, no. but he's like a heavier set like I am, mm -hmm. but he still gets over who he is. He doesn't let like his size limitate what he can and can't do. Cause literally if you like go through my YouTube history, there he is mm -hmm. all through there, but I don't like copy his style all the way. Cause then it's cause they look at me and we're like, or it's just, this is Penta without a mask on. You know, you take bits and pieces, you learn what you can. Bits, I guess I would say, like you take bits and pieces from people mm -hmm. who make you are. But he's at the top of my list of anybody and everybody that I watch. He's just the most entertaining, most person I feel like I can relate to as a person in wrestling you can relate to the skeleton ninja from mexico <laughs> skeleton ninja yeah because that's like I, I that's like my I goal in wrestling like i want to go to mexico i mm. want to wrestle in mexico i want to like go like have a career there because when i see there that's what i like i like the lucha style i like the characters it brings like literally my youtube is like full of cmll and triple a <clears throat> So, like, most of the guys I just watch down there more than anything. That's awesome. Um, where can people find you online? Um, you can find me on Twitter at C Black and a little and sign and C Negro <laughs> for my cousin, Cristiano. You can find me on Instagram at Pandubis, P A N D N U B I S. You can find me on Facebook as Chris Renoir. All three of those fun social media. That's medias. awesome, and of course you're you're working with Rise. Uh, anywhere else that you're popping up with uh, in the near future? Um, Black Diamond, mm -hmm. like because I'm just come I'm just coming back from surgery. Yeah, because I yeah, that took me out for a while, so like I kind of like backed away just to like reassess everything. So I'm coming back to Rise first, then get get myself situated and be like, all right, I'm going back out there because <clears throat> I view. During my first few years, I was just kind of like getting comfortable. I wasn't too sure what I wanted. I was nervous to go out there and put promoters. I'm like, man, these promoters probably get like 10,000 videos a day. What separates me? But now I'm getting a better idea of like, you know what? I know what separates me. I'm confident now to send stuff out to people. So I hope to be spreading out more in the area 
here in the future. That's awesome. Well, I say it's been an awesome uh, uh, evolution to see you the last year and a half, I guess, yeah. uh, since I've been uh, exposed to you down there. And uh, cool to see what's going on in Rise in general. So Definitely. awesome. Thanks so much for being on the show. Go check them out. Christian Noir, um, of course. And uh, and check out everything going on. His, you can maybe find him under his old name, Christian Black, over at IndieWrestling.us <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <you laughs> for a few matches. <laughs> and uh, so many more coming up uh, as uh, they are part of the IndieWrestling.us um, uh, system over there. Uh, as well on VOD and digital download. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, support uh, our friend here. And, uh, of course, please subscribe to the show if this is your first time listening. And look for the Indie Mayhem show on your favorite podcast provider. And, of course, the videos over on the iTunes and the uh, – I'm sorry, on the YouTube and the Facebook. And now IndieWrestling.us over on Twitch as of this week. Uh, we're showing a lot of the videos from Rise, from Premier Championship Wrestling, uh, IWC, RWA. Uh, the old prime wrestling and even uh, uh, interviews like this will be up there too for you guys to watch so please go check it out and until next time please support indie wrestling oh. this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com